welcome back to the channel. Rocco Fast is back. I was on vacation, had a little family time, and now we are back at it. And today we've got something that's gonna be pretty cool. I'm excited about it. Can you guess what it is? Well, you probably saw the thumbnail, or you have no idea, because you just saw Brocco Fast, click the button, and was like, this is it, I gotta watch. <laughs> uh, today, we are specially invited to the Enclave here in Tampa to uh, test out our off-road track with one of the brand new Grenadier 4x4. I think that's how you say it. We're gonna find out here in a couple minutes when we get there. Um, but pretty awesome. We're gonna be able to take this bad boy off-road, up some steep inclines, maybe some jumps. I don't know what they got planned for us. But uh, before we get into today's video, hit subscribe, hit like, comment below. You know the drill. Join Team Brocco Fast for all your automotive fun stuff. <laughs> uh, so it's good to be back, you know. Uh, but we are on the way there. We will be there shortly. I'll show an update of the Enclave when I get there. They've been doing some awesome progress. The buildings are getting closer and closer. The track is paved. The roads are paved. It's going to be pretty exciting. So onward. Let's go. All right. Look at that. How cool is that? Welcome, Ineos Grenadier. Okay. This is all new. I haven't seen any of this stuff. That's going to be our security guard gate, which is pretty gnarly. Let's see if it's focusing or not. Out the window here. There's the convention center. Getting, getting built and big and man, it's gonna be huge, but love that the roads are, are paved. They were just paved the last time we were out here um, for the uh, the hypercar reveal, which was really cool to see all that good, that good stuff. I'm just gonna film so you can see, and there's I-4 right there. So we're gonna have a bunch of shrubs and bushes and obviously this giant wall here blocks a lot of the activity um, going through. You can see some of the buildings What's really cool is the track is paved. That's the most exciting thing for me, anyhow. Um, okay, here we go. You can see some of the buildings are are done here. They said to go behind building five, so we gotta find building five, and I can't remember where that is. <laughs> but I know the off-road portion is back in the back. So, looks like they have a little vent tent up. It says, keep going. That's pretty cool, they've got all the signs uh, packed up. This is the skid pad. I don't know if you can see it, but this is the two acre skid pad, which it looks like uh, there's already been donuts done on it. Uh, someone has definitely broken it in. Thanks for the invite. Just kidding. All right. These building one here. Building one, I think, is pretty much complete. As you can see, all the awnings are up, um, you know, and then uh, back in the back here, you'll see the back side of the buildings. Now, four, six, five, and the pool is gonna be over here. Now, here is the off-road area. This is uh, this is the new off-road area that I haven't seen yet, but there's the building. Um, everything is right here. Looks like the pool is getting put in, and here's our off-road experience. So we're gonna park, and let's see what this is all about. Okay, we got here. We are all checked in. Got my badge here. Uh, allows me to drive the cars. So we are gonna drive these bad boys. I've already seen some of them take off on the off-road course and uh, they look pretty awesome. They've got a good display here, check-in. They got a tent, they got the vehicles here. Things pretty awesome. So let's check it out. And then behind us, we have the Enclave and we're gonna have on the full off-road park back there. So that'll be pretty cool. So let's, uh, let's get into the vehicle, the Grenadier 4x4. Now this is my first look at this thing. I've, I've looked at them online. I think it's Enios and uh looks pretty awesome i mean if you can tell by the on uh, the uh the incline <laughs> this thing climbs right up it reminds me of uh you know kind of a land rover was it the defender um you know that is a classic look timeless everybody knows it let's check out underneath this thing pretty beefy suspension you can tell this one's been uh, used as a test vehicle front diff Pretty good clearance on everything. So it'll be good to learn what this thing can do. Pretty excited. There's another vehicle. 
take a look at the interior here. Nice feel to it. Very solid. Must be a BMW shifter, which is interesting. Almost looks like a BMW screen as well. It's got Recaro's in it. Solid feel with the door. Sweet. So right here we got some of the colors, the solid colors there, and then more the metallic options. It's hard to really tell without seeing them in the sun. I gotta check out some of this stuff here. So it definitely can be a workhorse, utilitarian, and it's definitely built, built for the customer. Pretty cool. And we got the tire options. Um, so real quick, my name is Wes. I'm not an Ineos employee. I'm a contracted car guy. So. I got into the automotive world through a very short professional racing career, Daytona, Sebring, Milan, that kind of stuff, and then some sports cars, and then when you get too old and lazy to try to make a living doing that, you end up going to work for the manufacturers. So I spend about half my year at racetracks with Porsche and McLaren, and I spend the rest of the year kind of in Moab with Jeep and Toyota doing a lot of the product development and marketing events, that kind of thing. I've been with Ineos for about two years now doing work for them ever since they brought the very first PTO one unit over here trying to answer questions and, and just introduce people to this particular vehicle how many of you are reservation holders most of you me too well, so we just want to jump in here, here. Or, yeah, thank you for that. Oh. so I was just saying I'm a reservation holder like <laughs> almost everybody else here today I don't get any special treatment. I don't get any backdoor information. I'm going to share with you what I know, but just know that I'm just as impatient as everybody else here. I'm ready for this next thing. But part of the reason I throw all that stuff out is I want you to know once in a while, I'm going to say, look, in my opinion, and I want you to understand my opinion comes from 30 some odd years of working for every car company out there and trying to see what they're dealing with. And I want you to understand why this vehicle is so much different and why it's going to be my next new car. All right, so you all drove it. You all thought it was pretty cool to drive off-road, right? It's very, very capable. Even though we didn't do anything really strenuous out there, it gives you an idea of what this thing's capable of. Considering even on that little trail, you didn't get a bunch of spinning wheels. The truck ever never feels like it's working hard. I honestly believe you could take one of these Fieldmaster units without the lockers and the big dirt tires and all that stuff, and I could easily cross the Rubicon Pass with it from Georgetown California to Tahoe and nobody believes me but I've crossed that pass more than most probably I've been over that mountain pass probably 50 times in all kinds of different vehicles I know this would do it without the lockers with everything else now with lockers it'd be quicker and I wouldn't have to be as careful but I honestly believe I could take this thing stock right off the showroom floor and take it over that pass all right what I can't tell you is what it drives like at 80 miles an hour on the freeway because we haven't had the opportunity to do that. These cars aren't legal for on-road use. That's not how they were permitted when they were brought in to the U.S., so we can't do that. But if you're a reservation holder, we're going to try to come back through and do this tour again, late spring, early summer, with road-going vehicles so that everybody can drive them on the street. All right, just so you know, that's coming. They haven't worked out the logistics yet or when we're going to get those vehicles, but they're going to do that before you have to place an order, all right? So, let's talk about the vehicles a little bit and what their schedule is, because that's the biggest question I get. We all want them as soon as possible, right? 
they're still aiming for delivery in December of this year as model year 24s. So right now in Europe, they're delivering model year 23s. There's no difference, just the VIN number gets changed. It's a 24. We're looking to start doing deliveries here in the US by December. For that to happen, they have to build them in September because it takes a while to get them to the port in France, ship them to New Jersey, get them through customs, get them on a truck and get them to your town. So they need to build them in September. For that to happen with their production cycle and how many they can build in any given month, you're gonna to have to place your order in, in June. And for you to place your order in June, we're gonna to have to give you all the information you need in early May. So that's what everybody wants to know. How much are they and how much are the accessories and blah, blah, blah. We will give you all that information. We are on track to do that in early May. We want you to have about three weeks or so to think about it. And then we're gonna ask you to pull the trigger in June. You'll get assigned a VIN number. That one goes in the queue. They start building them in September. They start delivering them here in December. Does that make sense? Right now, there are about 7,000 or so reservation holders. That number is obviously going to go up between now and the summer. But we also know a bunch of people are going to drop off because they found a new shiny thing to go look at or they're college <laughs> kids and they're just, you know, it's wishful thinking, but they can't actually pull the trigger. Excuse me. So assuming there's around 7,000 reservation holders that can then be given the opportunity to convert that reservation to an order, we should be able to be able to deliver almost all of those vehicles by about this time next year. We start doing deliveries in December, just before Christmas. By March, April, all reservation holders should be pretty much taken care of. Does that make sense? So hopefully that's good information. When you're ordering these, a lot of people ask me about, you know, the trim levels. You know, we've got the Trial Master and it's Trial, not Trail. Trial Master and Field Master. Uh, all they're trying to do is simplify the ordering process. And because of some regulations with customs, it makes it easier for us to bring them in. In Europe, you can get a Grenadier, basically a clean slate with nothing on it. And let's say there's 130 boxes you can go down the row and just check and just keep adding stuff to your Grenadier. In the US, that's not how cars are usually purchased. Again, it makes it a little easier through customs. We have these two models to start with. So the Trial Master, geared a little more towards dirt. The field master is geared a little more towards street. So if you know you want leather seats, start with the field master. If you know you want the lockers, start with the trial master. The way I kind of phrase it to people is, look, if you need a four wheel drive because you like going hunting or you like going fishing, but your hobby is the hunting and the fishing, you just need a four wheel drive to get you there, Fieldmaster is probably the way to go. If your hobby is four-wheeling and the whole point of going out in the woods is to try to find places that are difficult to go and you're just trying to camp when you get there, you probably want a trial master. Does that make sense? So the trial master, for example, could be like, well, some of the ones like that blue one at the end there. It's the steel wheels, the dirt tires. It has the, the E-track on the side that you can clip stuff for the bodywork. It's got a snorkel on it. It's got cloth seats. Fieldmaster, on the other hand, doesn't come standard with the locker. It's got the alloy wheels. It's got the street tires. It's got the rub rails instead of the E-tracks here. It's got leather seats. It's got a sunroof. But I could start with either one of those vehicles and start clicking boxes, and I could build them basically exactly the same, with very few exceptions. There are a couple of exceptions. If you start with a trial master, you can't unclick the dust snorkel. So if you get a trial master, it's going to have the snorkel on it. So for me, up in Seattle, I'm going to have to buy that little plastic vent right there and the two plugs for the A-pillar because in Seattle, it's not dusty. And if you're driving around with a snorkel, everybody knows you're the new guy that just moved up here from California. So it really takes a while. <laughs> So for me, there, there are a few exceptions, but for the most part, it doesn't matter where you start, you can basically build them however you want. They can be the same vehicle in the end. So is that helpful? When you're ordering them, make sure you understand the difference between accessories and options. Options have to be built into the vehicle when they're building it. Accessories can be added later. 
And the reason why is because once you place your order, we want you to be able to change your mind on something. If it's an accessory, it's no big deal. If it's an option, you can change your mind, but we have to issue you a new VIN number and you go to the back of the queue. They'll still build that truck probably that you originally ordered, but it'll go off as dealer stock. Because if you order a car originally with sunroofs and then you change your mind, well, we were already building that truck with sunroofs. We can't change it. We can't fill those holes. So we're going to give you a new VIN number and you just go back to the back of the queue. But we're not going to tell you you can't do it. Does that make sense? You're, you're a reservation holder. You placed an order. One of the other questions I get almost every day is, what about dealer addendums and markups and being ripped off from the dealer? As a manufacturer, we can't tell dealers what to sell the cars for. We legally can't, nobody can. But as a reservation holder, you're somewhat protected because for the reservation holders, we're gonna work out and tell you what the price is. And when you place that order, that's the price. Now, once it's opened up to the general public and they're going into the stores, we're gonna strongly discourage, but if there's demand, the dealers can get whatever they can get for them. We're trying very hard to get dealers that aren't going to do that, but it is what it is. What dealers are you gonna go with? I legally can't tell you. They know now, pretty much every one of them, most, almost all the contracts have been signed, but we can't tell you and because there's a lot of training that has to happen behind the scenes. And if I tell you and you call that store tomorrow, just because the owner knows they're doing this in nine months, the guy that answers the phone has no idea what you're talking about, right? So we don't want to blindside anybody. So legally, we can't tell you until all the dealers say they're ready to roll this out. Otherwise, I would share it. But here's what I will tell you. If we're in a city doing this tour, there's a dealer there. And these are standalone dealers. Everybody, for some reason, was under the impression that you're going to buy these or service them at a BMW store or whatever. No, these are standalone dealers. It's an Ineos dealer. There's an Acura store, an Ineos store, a GMC store. These are going to be standalone dealers. There's not going to be... Pardon me? How do you service it to that point? Well, so in the major metropolitan areas, the main service center would be that dealership. In the white space between those dealers, they're developing a full service network. For instance, it could be like the Bosch service network. Anybody that's Bosch certified has full access to the parts and service catalogs. And there's nothing, you know, everybody thinks that's weird. There's nothing magical on these. And in fact, we've eliminated half the computers and half the major problems that dealerships have to deal with with modern cars. And the electronics running the engine and whatnot is the same Bosch system that's in a Cadillac, Jeep, BMW, right? So, I mean, it's, there's nothing magical about this. And, and with the exception of the axles and the transfer case, which are kind of our own development, mechanically, there's nothing magical about it either, right? So it's just a multi-link suspension. It works better than almost everybody else's, but it's just bushings and bars and stuff. So. And as an owner, from what I understand, we're all going to have the full parts catalog and the full maintenance catalog also. So if you're a do-it-yourselfer or you happen to be in Moab and you break something, you're supposed to be able to get online with your app and order the part and have it drop shipped at your hotel. So they're doing things a little bit different. So helpful so far? All right, let's take a look at this particular truck. Again, this is... These are all prototypes. We've got some misbuilds. We've got some features on them that you may or may not see. But everybody asks a couple of questions. If I could park in just a second. A couple of things people ask about are, do the seats fold flat? And they don't exactly. seat back actually goes flat, but it doesn't go flat with the floor. You gotta remember, we're building we're building hydrogen models, EVs, and everything else, so this, it has stadium seating, because that seat stuff has to go someplace eventually. They're working on, and I'm impatient, so I'm doing my own shelf that lines up with the seat, with the seat back, so that I can have a tool drawer everybody makes them for full-size trucks and it'll only be a matter of time before there'll be several options for that and then you'll have a flat load floor and the only challenge is it's a little higher load height you're picking something up and putting it in it but if you've got a drawer here it's five inches high capable of holding 150 pounds over here and then you've got a flat floor to that seat that's a pretty good system 
And even taking five inches off of this, it's still a taller opening than any other SUV out there. Just about. Okay, that's where the batteries are going to go to do that in. This particular one has the Safari sunroofs in it, and I know this is Ford and it's hot. People ask me what I think. Here's what I know they're unique. No other vehicle has them out there. If you're buying a vehicle and you want to ensure that it retains as much resale value as possible, that's one of those things because nobody else does it. And they're actually a pretty nice sunroof. It's got a deep rain gutter around it. It's not going to leak with water to flow up or flow down. And they come out pretty quick. So it's a nice little feature. And then they've got a bag that they store in. Okay, let's download some information. We're all done. Before I get started, um, let's turn the AC off so we can hear if we don't have that noise. But anyhow, there was no filming inside. I know everybody wanted to see the inside of the vehicle and um, see how it drove. I had everything ready to set up. But because they are prototypes, they have some quirks uh, on the computer systems and things like that that they're all working through. This is part of the 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 testing of the systems and this is what helps get these vehicles better but i will say it was pretty awesome uh we went through water we went through and up an incline like this i mean we did a 28 degree turn like this with the vehicle and we were well i was like holy cow i mean and it stays planted the whole time all four wheels had traction we went up hills to where i could see the sky and see nothing but the ground i mean and it it handled it beautifully. Um, it's got the uh, B58 BMW motor in it. It's got the ZF8 speed in it. <laughs> really easy to work, really easy to modulate. Uh, plenty of power. It's actually detuned, uh, I think, to around 280 horsepower, but the red line's at 6,500, so they managed all the torque. It's all about torque in that vehicle. Comfortable. Has every gadget gizmo as far as off-road heaven. Uh, locking diffs and lock the front, lock the rear, this, transfer cases, blah, blah, blah. A lot of information that is foreign to me because I do a lot of track stuff, not off-road stuff, but really, really impressed, really impressed with the vehicle. If you were an off-road guy, this is the vehicle for you. I mean, it was fantastic. Really, 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 really cool. So I'm glad I got to do the experience at the Enclave. Thanks for joining. Hope you hope you like the video. Hope you learned a little bit more about this vehicle that I didn't even know existed, which is really cool. Um, and just to see more information about it was was in, very interesting. Hope to bring more of this type of stuff to you. Uh, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe, like down below. You know the rules. I'll see you in the next one. Bro, go fast.